Hello there. This video, we are going to talk about Buffalo Mini Station Extreme USB 3.0 portable hard drive repair and data recovery. Inside of a Buffalo Mini Station Extreme portable hard drive is a 2.5 inches hard drive and a SATA to USB adapter. The hard drive brand name could be Western Digital or others. The Buffalo Mini Station Extreme portable hard drive problems can be categorized into three. Problem one, SATA to USB adapter damage. Problem two, hard drive PCB board damage. Problem three, hard drive disk assembly damage. Breaking the port connector is very common in portable hard drives. Because the connector is soldered on the very thin PCB board, this is the most fragile part of a portable hard drive. One side of the connector is a heavy hard drive relatively to the thin PCB board. Another side is a fixed computer. The connector is like a fragile bridge in between. And also, every time when you use the portable hard drive, you need to plug and unplug the portable hard drive. Sometimes the power connector is broken, but most of the time it's the USB port is broken, and most likely the broken part is the thin PCB board, which is inside of a portable hard drive. The three common methods to fix a hard drive PCB board. 1. Clean the contacts. 2. Repair the bad PCB board. 3. Swap the whole PCB board. Method 1. Clean the contacts. Clean the contacts on the PCB board and also on the hard drive can fix the problem caused by the poor connection between the PCB board and the hard drive. This picture shows the basic components and their functions on the PCB board. You may use this picture as a reference to fix the PCB board. The most vulnerable parts on the PCB board are power supply circuit and motor IC. Fixing hard drive PCB board method 3 PCB board swap. PCB board swapping including two steps. 1. Find the correct donor PCB board. 2. PCB board firmware transfer. PCB board swap step 1. Find out the correct donor PCB board. Locate the hard drive model number on the front of the hard drive label. Locate the hard drive PCB board number. Different brand name, different PCB board. The PCB board numbers are different. You may go to hdd-parts.com to check out other brand name PCB board numbers. After find out the hard drive model number and the hard drive PCB board number, we use them as a reference to search for the correct donor board. We found the correct donor PCB board for the hard drive, but this is only the first step. The next step is we have to do the PCB board firmware transfer to make the donor board work on the original hard drive. PCB board firmware. PCB board firmware is the information data on the PCB board. It may be in the memory chip or in the main chip on the PCB board. For this model hard drive, we have to do the PCB board firmware transfer first, then we swap the PCB board. Otherwise, the new board will not work on the original hard drive. Why do we have to do the PCB board firmware transfer? Because for this model hard drive, one PCB board includes two parts hardware and firmware. The PCB board firmware includes hard drive's unique configuration data. 
the hard drive needs this unique configuration data to work. So we have to transfer this unique configuration data from the original board to the donor board. Then the donor board can work on the original hard drive. Regarding the hard drive PCB board firmware transfer, we have three things to mention. First, PCB board firmware transfer is different from the hard drive firmware upgrade. The PCB board firmware transfer is to transfer the PCB board firmware from one board to another board. The hard drive firmware upgrade is to upgrade the hard drive's own firmware. It nothing to do with another hard drive or another PCB board. Second, we can do the PCB board firmware transfer from the physically damaged PCB board, like a burned, watered, or other kind of damage. Our PCB board firmware transfer success rate is more than 95%. Third, we do the PCB board firmware transfer for our clients for free. This picture illustrated the procedure of fixing a hard drive PCB board. First, the clients sent in their PCB board. Two, we fix the PCB board. Three, we ship back the PCB board to the clients. We receive many questions regarding the hard drive PCB board firmware also called hard drive PCB board bias and uh, the hard drive PCB board compatibility. So let's talk a little bit more about this in general. Some PCB boards BIOS are in the independent memory chip like the first picture shows. Some PCB boards BIOS are integrated into the main IC, like the second picture shows. Most of the modern hard drives PCB boards need to do the BIOS transfer before swapping the PCB board. Even the donor boards are identical with the original boards in hardware, we have to transfer the BIOS from the original board to the donor board then the donor board can work on the original hard drive. The third picture shows some of these PCB boards. But there are some hard drive PCB boards do not need the BIOS transfer. As long as the donor boards are identical with the original boards, you can swap the boards directly. The fourth picture shows some of this kind of boards. If you have any questions such as how to find a donor board, if your board need to do the BIOS transfer, where is the BIOS of your PCB board? How to swap your PCB board? Please go to www.hdd-parts.com to check it out. Or you may take pictures of your hard drive and the PCB board and email to us. We will give you the correct answer. If the hard drive disk assembly is damaged, we can do disk data recovery to recover the data from the disks. The common symptoms of hard drive disk assembly failure are the following. 1. Hard drive makes weird sound. 2. Spin nicely but no access to any computer. 3. Hard drive no spin. Tips. If the storage configured as mirrored hard drives, you can take the bad hard drive out, then put same size or bigger size another hard drive into the bay 
and the storage will mirror the data to the new hard drive automatically. If this trick doesn't work, that means the two mirrored hard drives are both damaged, or the storage was configured as read zero, that means the two hard drives are different. This picture shows the procedure how we do data recovery for our clients. First, the client send their hard drive to us. Second, we do data recovery. Third, we ship back the data to our clients. Thank you so much for taking your precious time to watch my video. Any comments are really appreciated. If this video is a little bit of help, could you please click on like to support me? Thank you again. Bye.